Thank you for joining us this afternoon for this next in ATA's educational webinar series, System Modeling of Vented Space Systems and Cold Gas Thrusters. I'm your host, Scott Tebow from ATA Engineering, and your speaker today will be Scott Kidney out of our Herndon, Virginia office, also from ATA Engineering. Before we get started with uh, today's webinar, please be aware that, uh, that we will uh, be happy to take your questions during the session in the, uh, in the chat window or in the Q&A window, if you like. And when we get to the Q&A session, we will uh, be able to take live questions. You just kind of raise your hand and uh, Jonathan will uh, enable your, uh, uh, your mic so that you can ask your question. Again, thank you for joining us and we'll get started now. So before we get started, I'd like to uh, introduce ATA Engineering so you understand our sponsor for today's webinar. ATA Engineering is an employee-owned small business with a full-time staff of almost 200. Uh, we are an engineering services company that also sells and supports software from Siemens. ATA's business is helping our customers through high-value engineering services solve their toughest product design challenges. We work principally in space and aerospace, but also defense, robotics and controls, industrial and mining equipment, consumer products, and even themed entertainment like uh, roller coasters, attractions, mechatronic figures, and that sort of thing. We provide these services from our offices nationwide. Our headquarters is located in San Diego, California, but we also have branch offices in Los Angeles, Berkeley, Albuquerque, New Mexico, the Denver area, Huntsville, Alabama, where I'm located, and Herndon, Virginia, where Scott Kidney is located. And we are looking soon to open offices in Boston and in Madison, Wisconsin. From our offices nationwide, we provide a variety of services for design, analysis, and test. We are also a Siemens Platinum Level Solution Partner for Siemens Software. We provide uh, licensing and support for a wide variety of Siemens software products, including NX, NASTRAN, VMAP, Star CCM Plus, SimCenter 1D, which includes the AIMSIM product, which is the subject of today's webinar, SimCenter 3D, Team Center, and others. We uh, offer a support hotline that is available from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern time and uh, both remote and in-person training classes. In fact, Siemen, uh, Siemens has uh, designated ATA as the preferred training provider for the NASTRAN product line and the curriculum for NASTRAN used worldwide for training is actually developed by ATA Engineering. We are also a certified expert partner with validated expertise in FEMAP, Star CCM Plus, and SimCenter 3D. To learn more about some of the products from, uh, from ATA, you can visit us at the website shown, ata-e.com slash software, where you can download a wealth of resources, not only information on the individual products, but past webinars just like this one. The recordings are available there. Uh, white papers, presentations, macros, tip sheets, and all kinds of other resources that are useful to engineers every day. We invite you to come and visit us. So before we launch into the specific topic, I want to give a quick overview of SimCenter AIMSIM, part of the SimCenter 1D family, and how it is used. AIMSIM is a 1D system modeling tool. It's a system simulation. It is related to model-based systems engineering, MBSE. But whereas MBSE is principally looking at the interfaces between all the different parts of a system and not really modeling the system itself, AIMSIM actually provides a simulation of systems, even very complicated ones, on a 1D basis. It can uh, model any level of complexity of system, including a variety of different kinds of uh, components, which I'll uh, go over right here. 
So you can uh, optimize your designs on a 1D sense before you make some of the important uh, trade-off decisions in your design, whether you're looking at fuel economy or energy management, uh, structural uh, integrity or durability, operability and efficiency, et cetera. Um, all of these can be taken into account in a 1D model. The important thing about uh, AIMSIM that really sets it apart, it really is a unique product in the Siemens portfolio and a unique product in the industry, in that a lot of 1D system modeling work is done by hand. Uh, you might use a tool, a tool set like uh, oh, uh, MATLAB Simulink or something like that, but ultimately you are individually coding all of the modules that are going into your model, whether you're looking at valves, pumps, electric motors, wiring, hydraulics, pneumatics, whatever, you end up with a lot of individual handwork. And when those models are completed, somebody who might try to pick up that model later might find it a mystery as to why certain things were done or how they work together. With AIMSIM, uh, a different approach is taken. Siemens has built and validated over 6,500 different uh, multi-physics models for every imaginable component in a complex system. This could include hydraulics, pneumatics, thermal, electrical, mechanical, signals, controls, etc. Uh, it looks like a very complicated product when you first start seeing it used, which you will in today's webinar, but it is actually more of a Lego building block approach. And once you understand the paradigm of how the product works, and you also understand the, the depth of information that's in the individual uh, pre-existing models, you can really understand the power of the AIMSIM product and how it can be used for applications like those we're gonna be showing today. Our presenter today is Scott Kidney out of our Herndon, Virginia office. Um, Scott has been with ATA for quite a long time and is a senior technical advisor at ATA Engineering and has provided design and analysis support both on a system level and on detailed design level for a variety of projects and is our principal expert on AIMSIM 1D system simulation. So take it away, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Oops. There we go. So you should see my screen. Yes, we and do. Excellent. So today we're going to be talking about uh, vented uh, vented tank or vented system analysis. Uh, this applies to a number of different space systems, of course. And uh, if you if if you can, just don't constrain yourself to just space. I've seen these types of uh, Systems are, are components requiring analysis in a number of different industries, such as uh, hydraulic tanks, fuel tanks, et cetera. Just anything where you, you have a flow that does not have a pump behind the flow necessarily providing pressure to push it along, but um, any number of uh, you know low pressure flows that need analysis for um, a number of different reasons. But today, um, we're going to be focusing on three different uh, analysis uh, problems I've seen recently uh, that I thought was good to share uh, through this. Um, and then all these models have had some slight modifications to them just for the webinar for format, but we're going to be first talking about just a, a vented cavity in uh, an aerospace structure, be it during launch or during uh, say flying where you may have uh, you know a, a design that uh, may be exposed to of course varying temperatures, pressures, convective surface heating or cooling and you need to have a pressure change occurring within this volume uh, that may be housing any number of things from you know electronics to uh, you know other components required for this uh, aerospace structure to operate. Uh, the need for this is such that it really keeps the weight down if you know what the pressure is inside of it. You don't need to carry um, 
higher margins just because you can't do the analysis. This this allows you to really get to the crux of the issue of what's happening with the pressure during uh, operation and fully understand it. So it it, it simplifies, you know, uh, a relatively, you know, simple problem on the surface, but, um, you know, once you throw in varying temperatures, pressures, et cetera, it becomes quite complex, but it allows you to make a very light structure knowing what's happening uh, within it. The second uh, problem that we're going to take a look at is a cold gas thruster. They're, you see them a lot in operations just because they're cheap, uh, simple to incorporate into an aerospace structure for positioning. Uh, relies on a two-phase transition uh, over a range of temperatures, and Ameson can definitely model that. And then you can also uh, incorporate into the models like your custom nozzle geometry to actually, uh, you know, gain valuable insight into the performance of that nozzle and and see if you're getting the thrust out of it that that you will require. Uh, last is. Uh, modeling a uh, honeycomb panel that uh, you know, can be used for a number of different things as far as uh, say like structure, solar array panels, et cetera, that with the honeycomb inside and going through a uh, pressure change during launch, uh, you can, you know, of course, see high pressures still retained within the honeycomb panel uh, if it's not vented properly. And a lot of people have used, you know, have turned to face sheet venting to uh, to satisfy that. But sometimes, you know, the face sheet sur surface area is very valuable, especially like in solar rays where you can put solar cells, et cetera. Um, so it's a valuable surface area that's being taken away for venting. Ameson provide is a, is a great tool to really, uh, you know, maximize this area for other uses. And uh, again, uh, you know, is a simple, provides a real simple, quick analysis to understand if you have a problem, do you require face sheet vending or not? So great use of the tool for that. So jumping into the modeling, just gonna first start up, turn to Ames in here, give a brief overview of what you're looking at. So in the big white space here is really where your model resides uh, it is uh, the, the process of simulation is really controlled through four different tabs at the top here where you can first sketch. This is where you can uh, drag and drop components onto the white space. And uh, for example, um, just looking at the left-hand side of this picture, uh, it, it's built of thermal components Dragging and dropping thermal components onto the sketch area and simply hooking them up is uh, is, is kind of how this is done. And I don't have, of course, I'm just wildly choosing com uh, components here, but it's as simple as that, that you can uh, drag and drop components onto your sketch area to define your system. Uh, Submodeling allows you to choose specific uh, ways that each of these components can behave. Uh, any of these uh, components here have a range of different uh, operations uh, that they can can uh, in a different way, uh, an array of different ways that can act and and perform in in the, in the model. This allows you to choose how that's going to perform. Parameters is actually the assigning of numerical values to each of these components, such as uh, tube diameters, tube wetted areas, volumes of uh, of tanks, uh, convection coefficients, orifice sizes, etc., pressures, temperatures, you name it. It's really assigning a numerical value to all of these components. And then simulation is the the crux of the problem, such that. Uh, it takes all this information, runs the simulation, and then gives you feedback as far as uh, what temperatures, pressures, et cetera, any number of different uh, values may you may be interested in here. So <clears throat> going back to sketch here, and just walking through what's happening in this particular model. So I do have 
the, the main core tank uh, is, is a chamber, it does have heat exchange. So I do have, you know, conduction going to a tank wall that's easily assigned. You can, you know, of course, change the various materials that the tank wall is made out of by just, you know, clicking uh, the particular uh, entry here for that. I'm going to move ahead to parameter. And just so you can see, um, you know, any number of, you know, predefined materials that are in here for that, you know, that could be used for, you know, thermal coefficients for the analysis. And then uh, a convective coefficient here, uh, you know, whether or not you do have, say, some kind of heating or cooling on this tank wall, if it's up against the surface of your vehicle, uh, is, is what's being modeled. So, so a tank with a volume of just dry air being vented to the outside. Uh, I have a tank volume of five liters. You know, I have you know five millimeter pipe going through an orifice being vented to the outside. And what I'm having happen on the outside here is that uh, I do have uh, you know pressure going from about one bar to a hundredth of a bar. So pressure is definitely dropping. Seeing a definitely a this is in Kelvin here a, a drop in temperature, so similar to you know what you might expect during a launch for a portion of the of the flight, uh, and just to kind of go through, uh, you know what does a simulation of this look like? Everything is set up. I'm gonna I have the simulation window here, but it. You know, a 64 second simulation of flight, you know, happens in just a snap of a finger uh, with with this simple model. And I'll just run it again so you can see it. Uh, it does kind of a compilation step beforehand, runs, and then it's done. And then from there, you can see uh, what's happening within any of these chambers or pipes, etc. By simply choosing the values, say, I wanted to see what's the what's the pressure change within this chamber and just see, um, you know, it started off at atmospheric and then it dropped, you know, over some amount of time uh, to this final value, you know, based off of the depressurization rate of the atmosphere or whatever atmosphere it's experiencing during flight, just by simply picking on that and dragging it over. And I could actually say, okay, so this is, you know, the definition of the pressure, just to see the the, the the difference from the command pressure in blue to what's the actual pressure within the volume as uh, it, it undergoes flight. So very simple um, to analyze. And you can see just, you know, for set up, uh, you know, just a handful of components, setting up the correct materials, dry air, very simple, very fast to analyze and, and uh, and get the answers you need to continue on with either you know structural design or structural analysis. Um, great tool. This is a, like a perfect entry model too of just getting to know AIMSIM. <clears throat> so from there, to talk about cold gas thrusters. It's a more complex model, uh, definitely with the state change that's typically involved in the fluid that's fueling this. So for this particular model, um, using uh, liquid nitrogen uh, as the propellant. Uh, this is going to be stored in a tank. Uh, it does go through uh, uh, an opening in the tank, and then I have it going through a variable orifice so I can ch adjust how much uh, liquid nitrogen is going through. Um, and then we're, instead of having just pipes with loss built into it, we're actually uh, kind of more closely tracking uh, the losses in the pipe with actually preset um, resistances and everything. And we model the two phase system. So the tank, you know, holds two phases of nitrogen, uh, runs through an orifice. And then what we do is we model that all the way up to the nozzle throat area so that we have the correct pressures and flows in this particular length of the model up to this point. And the thing, and the reasoning for this is we want to, you know, capture, of course, pressure, temperature, flow rates, et cetera, such that we know right before the nozzle, we're getting 
uh, the correct, you know, 100% gaseous nitrogen flowing through the system right before the nozzle. And we have the correct resistances uh, between between these. The one reason be, behind this is this nozzle component um, it resides in a different library. And I haven't really gone through libraries a whole bunch. I said th mentioned thermal. Over on the right-hand side here, I have about, I want to say it's somewhere between, you know, right around 40 different libraries. Uh, it just is that this nozzle actually resides in a different library from two-phase flow. So what we do is we measure uh, all the parameters of the flow for the two-phase system, pipe that over with unit conversions just because of how uh, these particular uh, uh, gas mixture components work, and then use that as a source in the gaseous side. So this is 100% gas, gaseous nitrogen flowing through the uh, nozzle and into some prescribed uh, atmospheric parameters here. We also have a setting in this particular model such that if it does detect that any of the liquid, uh, ni liquid nitrogen is not being, uh, you know, con converted fully to a, a gas, it stops the analysis because that's bad. We want a full gas uh, as it hits the nozzle for best operation. And uh, and from there, um, you know, it's a great way to just, we're gonna take a look also at some of the nozzle, uh, nozzle uh, properties that are available to you too, as far as, you know, the actual nozzle, once we get into parameters here, you don't have to be, you know, set on just, you know, what's built into the software. You can actually go through and define what's your nozzle uh, geometry by keying in different values, uh, adjusting the size and the shape of your nozzle based off of these dimensions here. Uh, and many different areas, uh, other areas, and I'm and I'm just saying, you know, you know, between the bell nozzle, of course, the dimensions you need a high level, <laughs> high, high number of modifications. But you can even pull in, you know, files of what's your nozzle geometry rather than just sticking with, um, uh, you know, what's here uh, as far as dimensions. So some of the great ways you can um, again customize your particular system, take a look just to, you know, all the different gases you have available to you. Uh, gas mixtures are another way. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at pure fluids for this particular uh, case, but you also have the, uh, the, the option of taking a gas, mixing it with an, uh, other gases and having that as part of your system. Again, moving from, you know, just assigning numbers to everything onto simulation, we're gonna go through here. This is where it's just a bit of a compilation step and then go into an, an actual analysis run. So this is a 30 second analysis run. Again, very quick, very fast. And it allows you to take a look at, um, like one thing I wanted to check was, uh, so this assigns an integer for what's the quality of the nitrogen and gas coming out of the tank. Um, yeah, it looks like I grabbed my flow rate instead. So here's the, the quality. And again, it's it's one. So this is, I know, staying completely gaseous, which is great. And also, you know, just verifies the analysis didn't stop. It did the full analysis cycle. And then uh, you have any number of different values here you can check as far as your flow going through just this particular device here, as far as mass flows, densities, you know, uh, entropy, gas mass fraction, et cetera, temperatures. Um, it gives you a wealth of information that, again, a very simple 1D model, um, and you're not diving into more complex software, but you're you're modeling it from tank all the way to nozzle too. Um, you know, so you have a very wide, you have the whole entire system um, can be on your screen um, without switching packages or anything like that with full two phase, change on the left and full gaseous uh, flow on the right. Take a look at the nozzle component. Uh, again, there's some really good information here as far as, you know, 
gas velocities through the vena contracta, uh, pressures, uh, temperatures, etc. And then additional uh, nozzle performance, such that what's your expected uh, thrust and vacuum thrust, et cetera, um, that you would be expecting with this particular design and this particular nozzle geometry. So again, uh, you know, great, you know, a great first step or a great, you know, I wouldn't even call this a first step. You're, you're pretty far into, um, you know, that particular design of your, your particular system at this point without um, moving to more complex analysis. And uh, and the accuracy is extremely high just due to you know everything you're capturing. And you could put more information into here as far as either you know insulation, thermal you know heaters, etc. Um, that's all available to you to you know do this particular design. Okay, so. Last model I'm going to go through today is going to be uh, that of a composite panel. In the case of, uh, if you took a composite panel um, and took it into, you know, some altitude, uh, you know, how does that honeycomb vent out to the sides, or do you require face sheet like holes in your face sheet to actually vent that honeycomb? <clears throat> this is typically uh, you, you do see, you know, sometimes, you know, pictures such as a honeycomb such as this with many, many different holes in it. But again, you're losing, you know, valuable strength when your holes become this big. So you don't necessarily want to get, you know, this type of material into your part just because of hole size. So, you know, it allows you to find limits as far as, um, you know, with a volume of each cell and then what's the uh, again, the orifice venting size on, on each of these volumes, it allows you to construct uh, a small section of that panel. And what I did here for for this is just using dry air, uh, five by 11 hexes uh, with, uh, I call it kind of like a, a boundary condition. And the way we typically uh, look at this is that this this corner cell here would be the one that's residing almost at the center of a panel and this is for honeycomb venting out of the sides of a composite panel where you would have the actual perforated honeycomb um, just venting to an outside and 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 all this uh, temperature and pressure defines the environment that the panel is being subjected to. So, uh, you know, again, if we're launching this into space, we're going to be pulling, you know, temperature is going to be cooling down, pressure is going to be going to, you know, a very small number of either PSI or bar uh, just to accurately model this. And, and just to, I'm just going to jump ahead here and just run this particular um, si simulation. Um, and just so you can see, I actually do have, a, I'm going to be going through just a short study on this particular model here. And for a study, it allows me to vary parameters and uh, take a look at what's going on. So I have three design studies here going uh, all at once. So it solves two and then jumps over to the third and then completes the simulation. And what a, a study is, is like I said, a variation of parameters. And what I did for this particular thing, uh, for this particular uh, problem, what I wanted to do was just because uh, in software and simulation, it's very tough to do you know, maybe a full sheet of honeycomb. It, it's, it's, it becomes unwieldy as far as the number of unknowns. And one thing you can do is uh, you can kind of, it's not going to be an exact match, but you can make it match exactly at the pressure that you're concerned about. And that is just because uh, typically when the atmosphere vents down to near zero, uh, you can get a single cell to behave 
like this corner cell, you know, right at that point. Otherwise, um, and and that's the 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 time at which maximum pressure in your panel uh, occurs. And so, so you can by using uncertainty factors at that particular time match uh, the volume in one cell uh, to the behavior of of just a very simple representation. And we did, and we're we're tuning in this representation just through the use of a design study. So. So as the temperature goes down, and you can see this, um, the pressure in this particular cell, it does follow, because it is so small, it follows a prescribed pressure very easily. Um, and I'm going to put in the, what's the, the pressure being prescribed here and zoom in on that particular area here um, through, let's see, I probably have to see. So you you see here, um, you know where the uh, this is the prescribed where neat, where it kind of evens out here is where you get the areas of um, maximum pressure. So to get this single cell to behave like this particular cell over here, we use a design study, and the design study has an uncertainty factor built into it, such that we can vary, uh, and what we do is we vary the orifice to have uh, the um, the performance or the behavior of this particular venting, vented cell to behave the same at that particular moment in time pressure is maximum. So right now, the design study is just set up such that we have an uncertainty factor uh, with, a, with a tenth and, uh, step up or step down assigned to it so we can go one step up, one step below, and just take a look at what does this look like. But very simple, to, to, to have an uncertainty factor is simply taking uh, one of the global parameters from the analysis, dragging it onto here, then setting up, you know, how do you want that to vary? So with that run, we, we already know uh, we have a, what we want to take a look at again it's going to be the prescribed pressure we're going to have the pressure in this particular cell put that on graph and then we're also going to be taking a look at this particular pressure here <clears throat> zoom in into this area here and just take a look at it and this is this area of maximum pressure difference. And I'm gonna pull up the study data. So this is just the particular model right now. And then pulling up the study data is gonna be give, it's gonna take the assigned uh, entries from the study. And from there, you can kind of see, uh, there's a bunch there's a bunch of different lines, but it's going to make more evident or make make more uh, sense here once uh, some of these uh, bars get on here. So or once the, the the Y values show up. So the top three is the port. That's going to be what's been defined. These are all the same. That does not vary for the study. It's not affected by the uncertainty factor. Again, uh, next thing we threw on to this particular graph was that corner volume of the 55 uh, cell area. Again, for the three runs, this doesn't change. But uh, again, the next thing we threw on was that single cell, which is gonna be approximating the behavior. This is the last three digits here, are our last three entries here are the, the pressure within that particular cell for the analysis. And you can start to compare. Um, again, we're interested at the at the closest time uh, to zero possible of of which of the uncertainty factors uh, gives us the best results. So again, we went up by a tenth, and then we went below by a tenth. This is the nominal value. Nominal value is still close when we're talking close by. You know. 
you're you're at five decimal places um and it gives some insight if you wanted to make a slight change which direction you wanted to go so this one could actually be lowered a bit so maybe um you know go from five seven closer to point six seven you could get a better uh agreement in this particular area uh, again, this, you know, to five decimal places, it's very close, but it gives you, if even if you do have an uncertainty factor, uh, it gives you some information here, just with the graphing, uh, how to tune it in and get the behavior. And what that gives you is then, you know, the ability to build an entire panel uh, out, of, out of this particular uh, entry here for, for that and get very very good agreement with uh of course much much more complex software so um but that really concludes um walking through these three models and the information you can get off of it looking at study manager two as far as how can you set up a a, a study on a parameter uh, and tune in the behavior of different models um, and how I could actually get this single cell model to behave almost exactly like this cell does at the time of which maximum pressure occurs. Uh, it, it, of the tools that's built in here, it's a, it's a very, very powerful, you know, simulation software. So as I come back here to this, I'm gonna hand over the presentation to Scott, take any questions and answers. Hey, Scott, thank you for that great presentation. Um, really enjoyed watching you go through that. I know Scott Tebow was going through a couple of questions in real time. Scott, do you want to recap any of that or or what, what did you have in mind? Yes, I'll, I'll recap some of the ones that, um, that we were doing uh, in the chat so that all of the participants can, uh, can hear the answers to them. Hold on just one second here. I need to... Uh get back to my questions here. Okay, so uh, there were several questions that were asked during the session and do feel free all participants to continue to add additional questions as we uh, as we go along. Um, so uh, the first question had to do with uh, the differences between AIMSIM and LabVIEW. And I had answered in the chat that uh, LabVIEW, a tool by National Instruments, is most commonly used as a software front end for various instruments and things that National Instruments sells. And you can do some system modeling in it both with and without hardware in the loop. Uh, but it's principally a development platform for programmers to, to write interfaces um, for hardware systems based on National Instruments uh, tools. Um, however, it is possible to do co-simulation between AIMSIM and LabVIEW. Uh, you can also do hardware in the loop type simulations with AIMSIM as it is, with or without uh, LabVIEW. Uh, the difference with AIMSIM is that the 6,500 different uh, pre-built models are extremely well documented um, and proven uh, models in a 1D sense for whether you're modeling, you know, transistors, uh, hydraulic pipes, pumps, uh, battery systems, or or thermal systems, or whatnot. Um, and so you you can build very complex models in AIMSIM without doing any programming whatsoever. But if there if it happens that there are things that you'd like to model that aren't in any of the, the existing libraries, you certainly can create and store your own individual models and use them in AIMSIM. You can also tie it through co-simulation to Excel, uh, Python scripts, um, the uh, um, things like uh, MATLAB Simulink or, or other tools as well. And I, th and I think even, you know, if you had like a more detailed CFD analysis or something in star CCM plus, for instance, I think you can tie that 
into an AIMSIM model too, right, Scott? Absolutely. Yeah, AIMSIM is kind of like the king of co-simulation. So if you had a, a situation where um, where you, uh, hold on, someone really wants to reach me. Um, if you had a situation where um, you really needed 3D information to answer um, or, you know, provide an accurate answer to go into your 1D model, um, you can certainly combine either structural analysis in SimCenter 3D um, or CFD and Star CCM Plus, you know, with your uh, your AIMSIM model. Um, you can also include almost anything, any arbitrary uh, other measure um, like uh, Excel spreadsheets, for example, or or various scripts. And so, I, I, sorry, I was going to say too, and I thought there was a very very simple version of star built into some of the components in AIMSIM. It wasn't uh yeah, yeah it's there not a, the full blown star. It's a yeah there is a baby star kind of a limited star CCM plus that you can buy as an option to AIMSIM that costs a tiny fraction of what um a full star license would uh would require but is capable of handling some simpler problems. And like I, I I don't think you would need that sort of thing for the vented space structures that you were talking about, Scott. But if you did, if there were some component of the structure that uh, that needed that kind of detail, then the uh, available, you know, uh, limited star add-on might be a good solution for that. So there were questions uh, also about where the models that are in AIMSIM come from. And they come from a variety of places, but when you click on the uh, the help mod, the help uh, button for each of the 6,500 models in AIMSIM, it will give you the complete derivation for the model. What's in it, how it works, where did it come from, what are the cited reference papers that were used to develop it. Uh, some of these are closed analytical solutions, some of them are semi-empirical. Uh, for anything empirical or semi-empirical, of course, it's going to be very important for the analyst to understand the range of experimental data on which the model is based. Um, but as long as you're not too far afield, if you're modeling a, you know, a pump that is uh, five inches and the model that's in Ameson was based on a six-inch pump, you're probably okay. If you're trying to model the same pump at half an inch, um, you might want to take a harder look at, at how that should be modeled or whether there's a more appropriate module in AIMSIM for that particular component. So there was some question as to whether Siemens does any experimental work of their own um, to put into the modules, uh, into the 6,500 models in AIMSIM. And the short answer is we don't know. I think it would be by far the exception compared to most of the uh, 6,500 pre-built models, which are really based on open literature. Um, there was also a question about, um, are there available models for specific parts, you know, individual manufacturers, individual part numbers? And uh, there is not, not that I'm aware of. Um, you can build your own and put them in a library that you can reuse. Uh, and a lot of times what people are doing is starting with a generic model in AIMSIM, and then pulling information off a manufacturer's data sheet to, you know, fill in the blanks um, of the particular uh, of the particular model, because every model is going to have a bunch of parameters that the user needs to fill in. That data comes from somewhere, and it's usually from the manufacturer's data sheets. Uh, the next question was: Is this an online online or cloud based software? Um, this software is currently not available online, but Siemens does, does intend to make it available at some point in the future. Uh, right now it is run locally. Um, it's available in a node locked version and a slightly more expensive floating version uh, where it could be shared uh, among any users at a given site. Uh, if you do have multiple users at a given site, it is possible to share among the users any um, modifications of the existing models or any specific models that you have yourselves created. So I think that's the last of the questions that I'm seeing. Uh, so this is your last chance. If you have a remaining question you'd like to ask, um, please do so. In the meantime, I will put up 
my contact information. If you have an interest in AIMSIM or any of the other uh, Siemens uh, software products that we've talked about today, or if you require engineering services for help on any of your own projects, we're more than happy to help you. And you can reach out to me at the uh, with the contact information shown. I am not seeing any other questions at this point. So I'd like to thank everybody for joining uh, in this uh, next in our ATA educational webinar series. And we hope to see you at the next one. Thank you very much.